Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the mouse preferences in Reaper. Let's go to our preferences. And right down over here, under editing behavior, is the option for mouse. Here's where we adjust the preferences for our mouse. The first option up here deals with mouse wheel targets, or our mouse wheel. By default, it's set to window under cursor. So if we move our mouse to any area we want to adjust, the mouse wheel is going to work there. But we could also choose window with focus. With this option, we have to make the window active or in focus before we can make the adjustment. So I usually prefer the default, window under cursor. Now the next option is on by default. Ignore mouse wheel on all faders. So if we move our mouse over to this fader and use our mouse wheel over the trackpad, use two fingers, it's not gonna adjust anything. Or our pan, we can still grab it and make a course adjustment, but the mouse wheel is not gonna work. But we could turn that option on right here. Again, it's ignored by default, but we could turn it off and use the mouse wheel right here. Now what I like about this, besides the fact that a mouse wheel is more like a fader, it's also more of a fine tune adjustment, where if we grab it, it's a lot more coarse, but we can fine tune it with the mouse wheel or the pan. Now you could also use a modifier. If you don't have a mouse wheel, use Command on Mac or Control on PC and do the same thing by grabbing it and it's also fine-tuned, but it's not a mouse wheel, so it's a bit different, but it still works for fine-tuned adjustments. And again, this option is on by default. So if you wanna use that mouse wheel, make sure you turn it off. The next option is based on track panel faders. In other words, everything but a fader and a pan. So it could be the mixer plugins, send faders, everything but the volume and pan adjustment. That's what this button is for. And this is off by default. So by default, we can control those with a mouse wheel. The next option is to ignore mouse wheel on transport edit fields. This is also off by default. So if we go to our transport down here, here's our tempo. We can use the mouse wheel to adjust our tempo. We can go up or down. Now I'm gonna select this to make it easier to see but you don't have to select it. Just putting the mouse wheel over there will make the adjustment. Go down or up. And this also works for rate, right over here. We can go on the number and adjust it. Let me just click it, make it easier to see. Or we can go right to the fader. Just put the mouse wheel right on the fader and make our adjustment. And double click it to put it back to one or normal. Now this also works over here for selection. So if we make a selection over here, we can adjust that selection at the beginning by scrolling this way. Again, I'm gonna select it to make it easier to see, but we don't have to select it. And just move the mouse wheel to adjust the start time, the end time, or to move both at the same time. To keep the length consistent, but change the start and end together, which we could also do by holding down shift and going up here and just dragging it around. But sometimes you wanna do it with a mouse wheel. And we could do that right here. Now, if you wanna move this by beats, there's a preference for that right over here. This is move the transport by beats. So if we turn this on, and go over here, we can adjust it, but it moves by beats, the end, or both together, right here. Now we could turn that off by toggling it using Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. So if we hold the modifier down while doing it, it doesn't go by beats. But if it's not selected, 
and we don't hold on the modifier, it also doesn't go by beats. But because we can toggle that modifier, we can leave it off over here and just hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC, and it moves by beats. And again, this is off by default. The next option will treat scroll messages from some laptop trackpads as a mouse wheel. This is going to depend on your laptop. So if you turn this on, it might work on your laptop. But this is off by default. The next option down here decides if mouse clicking on the volume and pan faders adjusts the track selection. So let's make another track. And with it selected, by default, if we move our fader up here, it doesn't adjust the track selection or our pan. So let's create some more tracks. So let's say we have a time selection like this, and we've selected this track and this track, and now we want to adjust the volume on this track. By default, it's not going to change the track selection, which is a good thing. Adjust this, adjust this. But there are times you want to change the track selection. Like if you're going to edit it right afterwards. So if this track is selected and you're going to edit this track, but first you want to adjust the volume, you might want to change the track selection all at once. And we could do that right here. Choose this one. And if we adjust the volume on this track, it changes the track selection. Or this one, or this one or muting, or soloing. Anything we do over here is going to change the track selection for that track. But by default, that's turned off right here. So it's not going to work that way. But I should also mention, when this is turned on, when we have two tracks selected, like this one and this one, if we move this fader, it changes the track selection, which is how you'd expect. But if we use the mouse wheel, it won't do that. Let's select this track and this one and use the mouse wheel here instead. It doesn't change it. Or the pan. Or even using a modifier. Hold on Command on Mac or Control on PC and do a fine tune adjustment. It doesn't change the track selection. Even though this is chosen. But again, this is off by default. The next option is to edit track names with a single click. By default, this is turned off. So if we want to add a track name or change a track name, we go over here and double click it. Or this one. But we could change it to a single click. Just turn this on. And just clicking up here lets us change the track name with just that one click. Click here, here, or here. But again, that's off by default. Now this option is on by default. Mouse click edit in track view changes track selection. So if we click over here, it changes the track selection over here, down here or down here, which is handy for editing. If I have an item over here and I want to edit it, and this track is selected, just going over here selects this time selection and the track. But if we don't want it to behave that way, we could turn this off, which is good for complicated time selection. Like this track is selected, and this track is selected, and you want to click up here for some reason, it doesn't change this track selection. These two tracks are still selected. It doesn't change to this one, or this one. But again, by default, it's going to change it. So clicking up here changes the track selection to this track, or this one, or this one. The next option is also on by default. Mouse click below the last track is going to clear the media item selection. So let's get rid of this track here and this one. Now let's make a few more items. Now if we select these items, clicking down over here, deselects them, which is the same thing that happens when we click over here into the empty area of a track. So by default, clicking down here 
does the same thing below the other tracks, but we could turn that off. Right here. And now with these items selected, clicking down over here doesn't deselect them. They're still selected. But by default, this is turned on. The next option allows us to modify the edges of a time selection over the media items in a track. Let me show you. Normally, if we have a time selection like here, we can go to each side of it and it changes our cursor like this so we can adjust our time selection. The left side or the right side. And we can do it up here as well. So triangles. But sometimes it's more convenient in a complicated track to just go right here. But sometimes the time selection is right in the middle of an item, like here. So we can't do it. We can still go down here, but that only works if there's an empty area of the track. If we had more tracks and more items, that might be hard to do. There's no good area to grab. But if we turn on this option, allowing us to modify the edges of a time selection over the items, we can do it right here. So if this time selection is over the item, we can still edit it, which is really good for complicated sessions where there's no good room to grab. And we can still move items by going next to it, like this. But if we go right here, we can adjust the time selection. But by default, this is turned off. So we're not going to be able to do that. So if that's important to you, just turn it on. Now this last option is really helpful if you don't have a right click on your mouse, or if you're using a pen but doesn't have a right click button, you could choose this option. On the Mac it's control and left click, on the PC it's start and left click, and you can perform all the same right click functions as if you did. Like with the right click menus, right here, or over here, or up here, you can't really get to them unless you have a right click button. But by using this option right here, we could use control on the Mac or start on the PC and get the same functionality. And this is off by default, but it's definitely good to know. So anyway, those are the mouse preferences in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use some of them, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.